morning. Good morning, everyone. My name is Mahat Mahampati, and I am an MS3 at Tulane. I've had an amazing time learning about interesting cases and advances in our field. With my presentation, however, I would like to take a look back into where we came from and the ancient healers who brought medicine to where it is today. I'm excited to present my essay titled Ancient Surgery, Uncovering the Roots that Influenced Modern Surgical Practice. This presentation will delve into the fascinating world of ancient surgery and explore their enduring impact on modern medicine. Contrary to popular belief, surgery is not a modern invention, but has deep roots in ancient civilizations such as Egypt, China, and India. While early healers were exploring the use of pharmacological agents, ancient surgeons were also developing surgical techniques to treat wounds and fractures. Evidence of early surgical practices have been unearthed at ancient Egyptian burial sites where surgeons used splints of soft bark and clay to reduce fractures. Similarly, in India and South America, early surgeons used termites and beetles to bite the edges of wounds. Once the insect latched onto the wound, their bodies were then twisted and extracted, leaving the insect's jaws in place to execute the same function as modern surgical staples. The first civilization we're gonna look into is ancient Egypt. The ancient Egyptians, known for their majestic pyramids, also demonstrated remarkable surgical prowess. Mummification, a practice synchronous, synonymous with ancient Egypt, required meticulous incisions to facilitate organ removal. This showcased ancient Egyptians' advanced understanding of anatomy. The ancient Egyptians believed the heart was the most important organ in the body that must be kept to take into the afterlife whereas the brain was not considered vital and removed. Removing the brain while keeping the face intact during mummification involved a transnasal approach to the skull base, a similar process used today for the extraction of pituitary tumors. And we can see a depiction of that in the image above. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, an ancient medical document contained detailed descriptions of surgical procedures including orthopedic cases such as dislocations and fractures. This text comprised of 43 cases structured by title, examination, diagnosis, and prognosis, and treatment. One case describes a clavicle fracture and the reduction of that fracture. There's another case that describes a humerus fracture as well. And the Ebers papyrus, the text seen on the slide, um, further highlights the Egyptians' knowledge of cardiovascular conditions, varicose veins, and surgical techniques like cauterization to treat an arterial aneurysm. The following is an excerpt from the text. This is a vessel, as, sorry, this is a vessel swelling, a disorder I will treat. It is the vessels that cause it. It originates from an injury upon the vessel. Then thou shalt apply to it treatment with the knife. This, the knife, is heated in fire the bleeding will not be considerable. Now we're moving on to the second civilization, ancient China. In ancient China, a surgeon known as Hao Tu made groundbreaking advancements. He performed complex abdominal surgeries with remarkable success. Despite surgeons being regarded as lower in the medical hierarchy, Hao Tu's contributions to surgery was unparalleled and revered in Chinese society. He, he, he was even referred to as the god of surgery. Wao Tou is credited with performing a variety of other surgical procedures, including the removal of parasites from ulcers and the dressing of battle wounds. The image shows, this image shows Hao Tou removing an arrow from General Quan Yu, as depicted in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Hao Tou's most significant achievement was his innovative use of anesthesia. He called his anesthesia, my face Shan, and this paved the way for more sophisticated surgical techniques in ancient China. The following quote describes him using ma fei Shan as anesthesia for a splenectomy. A man suffered from pain in the flank for 10 days with loss of hair, 
beard, and eyebrows. Hua said, one half of your spleen is rotten. You can be treated only by a surgical operation. After drinking Ma Fei Shan, the patient became unconscious and Hua opened the abdomen. The diseased portion of the spleen was removed. A salve was applied to the wound. Oral medication was prescribed and the patient recovered after 100 days. And finally, we're moving on to our last ancient civilization that is ancient India. In contrast to China, who's, where surgeons were among the lowest in the medical hierarchy, Indian stu surgeons stood at the apex due to their crucial role as healers during a period when the Indian subcontinent was in a perpetual state of large-scale warfare. The war injuries were complex and abundant. Skilled surgeons were in high demand and irreplaceable in Indian society. Due to their status and the ability to operate on cadavers, Indian surgeons were able to execute complicated surgeries, developing a prosperous field. Ancient India boasted remarkable surgical expertise, epitomized by Shashruta, the author of the Shashruta Samhita. This 1,700-page medical treatise detailed over 300 surgical procedures and showcased Shashruta's meticulous observations of human anatomy. This text shown in the this is the text that's shown on the image on the right. One excerpt from this text text describes the cranial nerves. Ten nerves maintain the functions of the body by carrying impulses of sound, touch, vision, taste, smell, respiration, sighing, yawning, hunger, laughing, speech, and crying. A pair of nerve each responds to sound, touch, vision, taste, and smell. Two nerves lower down at the back of the ear, which if cut, produce deafness. A pair of nerves inside the two nostrils, which if cut, produce anosmia. A pair of nerves below the end of the eyebrow, which if cut, causes blindness. Shashruta also performed in intricate surgeries like urinary stone extractions and rhinoplasty, demonstrating skill and precision unmatched at this time. Shashruta's contributions to surgery extended beyond procedural descriptions. He also provided detailed instructions on surgical equipment manufacturing, maintenance, and clinical uses. His treatise included descriptions of various surgical tools, including bone saws, forceps, scissors, scalpels, and even endoscopes. And these are depicted on the image on the slides. Shashruta's attention to detail and emphasis on surgical instrumentation laid the foundation for many of our modern surgical practices. In comparing the surgical practices of ancient Egypt, China, and India, we see a rich tapestry of innovation and expertise that continues to influence modern surgical practice. Despite the limitations of their time, ancient surgeons developed sophisticated techniques and approaches that laid the foundation for contemporary surgery. As we reflect on their contributions, it is evident that the legacy of ancient surgery endures in the principles and techniques that guide modern practice. Some of those principles are expressed in the following quote by Shashruta. A man who possesses courage and presence of mind, a hand free from perspiration, tremorless grip of sharp and good instruments, and who carries his operations to success and advantage of his patient who has entrusted his life to the surgeon. The surgeon should respect this absolute surrender and treat his patient as his own son. As we continue to advance in the field of medicine, let us draw inspiration from the ingenuity and determination of our ancient predecessors, whose pioneering sp spirit continues to shape the future of surgical innovation. Thank you for your time and attention. I welcome any questions you may have. I was always fascinated by history. I was did a lot, took a lot of history courses and we had a history competition where we had to write essays. And I was really curious about, I mean, I know when we learn about surgery as a field, we were learning a lot about um, the contributions of people in American culture. Um, 
and Eastern culture. And I was really fascinated to learn about more like, you know, people from the, I'm sorry, Western, we learned more about Western culture and I was more fascinated to learn about like, who are these, like, is, was surgery a thing in Eastern societies? Like, do we just assume it's from like a European standard society? Um, and I was really fascinated to learn like that a lot of this stuff comes from the ancient East, Eastern cultures. And I mean, this is thousands of years ago. And I mean, some of those practices that we have today still exist. And so I think, you know, an interest in history combined with, you know, wanting to learn more about other contributions to the field that I'm interested in going into, like, I think that came together um, for this project to happen. I don't, I don't know much details about it. I know they use more like herbal remedies. Um, it's definitely something I could look into for sure. I would be interested. I um, think there's not much literature on this topic in general. I think a lot of my sources come from long um, studies that looked at more medical treatments, and then they would have like a small section on the surgical treatments. So I think, I mean, this is something that definitely could be explored further um, by looking at primary sources and um, you know, doing a lot of reading. I think they definitely, and a lot of this stuff is also lost time and lost to, you know, some great fires and wars. So a lot of this knowledge may be lost. And so, I mean, we're just scratching the surface with what I've been talking about. I feel like there was a lot more going on back then that we just don't know about. Yeah, thank you.